Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special edition of the Pike County Judge Executive Show. We've devoted an entire episode of the show to the 2020 census. So thanks for being here. I'll let you all introduce yourselves, although everybody knows you. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm Ray Jones. I'm county judge. And uh, we have a very special guest, a, a, a pond creeker that, has, uh, that I have lassoed into a very important role for uh, the upcoming several months, and I'll let him introduce himself and tell him what I've asked him to do. Appreciate it, Ray. My name is Tim Hadfield. I'm the community CEO at Highlands ARH Regional Medical Center, and we uh, started this journey last, towards the end of last summer, uh, working on the Census 2020, and uh, I was selected chairperson of the Pike County 2020, 2020 Census Campaign. So we wanted to talk today about the importance of getting people out to complete the survey and what it's going to mean to Pike County. I think that is key. What's it going to mean to our area that we live in? Um, we have been hearing some of the, obviously, the messaging that the federal government has put out. But right here at home, let's talk about what's in it for us to make sure that we all participate in the census. Well, you know, if you look nationally with all the political turmoil and the, the talk about the coronavirus, you know, a big event that, that's getting ready to take place is the, is the decennial census. And we want to remind people what, why it's important. And I think uh, just looking back through some of the information, the first census was conducted on August 2nd, 1790. It's been done every 10 years since, and it is mandated by the United States Constitution. I'm going to turn it over to Tim and let him talk a little bit about why it's important because he's the CEO, he was CEO of Tug Valley ARH uh, Medical Center, and is now the uh, community CEO of Highlands ARH Regional Medical Center, which is a large employer in a neighboring county. People from Pike County work there. People from Pike County go there for medical care. So I think it's important. You let Tim take it from there and... Tell us some of the reasons that the census is important. I appreciate it. Well, <clears throat> you know, you, we always hear it's all about the numbers. And with the census, it truly is. As a healthcare facility, you know, we don't have a huge mass influx of people. So we want to count the people we have here. It has an impact on how we recruit physicians, how we recruit staff to the community. That's usually the first thing they do. Same with businesses. When they go out there and they pull up Pike County, Kentucky, they start looking at the census. They start taking a look at the population before they ever come to town and start looking at buildings. Uh, they want to see sort of the, the flavor of the county and what the county has to offer. So we're in a position, our numbers last time were in the low 60s to mid 60s. And it's very important that we get an accurate count. Uh, you know, there's some misconceptions about the census, and we'll get into those in a minute, but the accurate count is very important. We've been working on this since August last year. The key for us is to really work on some of those pockets that we didn't do a good job 10 years ago in collecting that data. And the neat thing about it, working with the Census Bureau, they can identify those pockets. So we're trying to find key individuals in, in those communities in Pike County that are sort of the face of that town so we can get out and get people uh, to a point they know that first time ever it's online, uh, which is really neat. So depending on the generation, uh, my daughter is 16 years old. She's not going to do anything by paper. And of course, our, our 20, 30-year-old generation, even us old guys at 50, we'd probably do it online as opposed to doing a paper survey. But those numbers are very important for us over the next 10 years. As we recruit physicians, as we recruit people in eastern Kentucky, that's what they look at first. Then they start taking a look at some other demographics, and then hopefully we can lure them into town to take a look at, at who we are, what we're about, and then we can grow that. Well, you, you hit it when you said it's all in the numbers. Truly it and is. it's not just the numbers, but it's the diversity of numbers. So we have to get everything. And if there are pockets out there that have been missed in the past, that can actually cost us real dollars going forward. Well, you know, I think there, there, there are people who literally are afraid to answer the census because they're afraid that their privacy may be violated. They're not sure how the data can be used. And one thing they, they need to understand is that the data is confidential. It can't be disclosed to anyone. It can't be used by any law enforcement agency. And, you know, as Tim said, the demographic data, it's not just how many people are here, but it's how old they are, what their incomes are, education levels. 
and how the population is situated even within the county. So that, that information is vital for government agencies, for businesses, and people really don't need to be concerned about, you know, if I answer this, can this information be used by, you know, a law enforcement agency? Can it be used by the Social Security Administration? Can it be used by, uh, you know, some company that buys the list with all my information uh, that we know that, that credit card companies and other companies sell those lists? So that, that's not the case here. And I think it's important for people to recognize that it is our responsibility to make sure that we do everything we can to count every man, woman, and child in Pike County, Kentucky. And it actually doesn't have anything to do with citizenship either, does it? So they're not asking for citizenship documentation. So if there are 10 people living in your home, we need to know about all of them. And again, that information can't be used, for example, by uh, ICE or DHS or any of those federal organizations that people might have some concerns about for whatever reason. Well, I, I think that's always sort of been a misnomer or a rumor out there, and you hear a lot in politics today, so I do think there's a, a little bit of fear with filling the census out, but truly, I mean, we're telling you, you can go online and look it up, don't believe us, but all the facts are out there, it cannot be used against you. Uh, the census is, is pretty robust with the questions. It's very short. You can go on to complete that. And again, the difference that makes, uh, it's that head count, like you said, the diversity in our community, too. It sort of tells our story. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to rely on those numbers for the next 10 years to tell our story. So the hope is that we, by doing shows like this and doing some PSAs, we can get the message out, the importance of it. And we've got some more events coming up and some more speakers. But, you know, at the end of the day, it is how many folks we have, the diversity, and then those numbers are key as we plot and plan strategically moving forward. And you know, it also impacts uh, the appropriations of our state legislators and how that looks in the future. There were some changes a couple of years ago in the districts, and you were still, still hard at it at that time. You, the reappropriation of the districts get bigger, and you have a much bigger territory, and you don't have the same voice because you have more counties to cover, and, and that makes it really challenging. So... You said something that's very powerful that we need to probably back up and say again, and that is this is one opportunity to give information that will live for 10 years. You can't go back and correct it in three to five if it's not right. So I think we need to remind people it is only every 10 years. So if you, you, know, if you report, 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 and tell the truth and get all the information out there, it can't do any harm. It can only do good. You know, Tim brought up, in the 18 years that I've served in the Kentucky General Assembly, we went through redistricting twice. And my district in 2000 started out as Pike and Letcher County. Then the first redistricting, it became Pike, Martin, and Johnson. And then in the second redistricting, it was Pike, Martin, Lawrence, Elliott, and Morgan counties. So we are, if we're not careful and we don't make sure, not just in Pike County, but throughout Eastern Kentucky, that we have, we count every person, we are at risk of losing one or two House seats and potentially a state Senate seat. You know, some people say, well, how do you do that? Well, if the population growth or shift is to the central part of the state, Northern Kentucky, Louisville, Lexington, and Eastern Kentucky is depopulating, when they re Here's basically the way they do that. They'll take the entire population of the state. There's 100 House seats. And they'll divide the House of Representatives by 100, the, the number of representatives into the population of the state. And the districts will have to be plus or minus 5% of that target number. The Senate seats, there's 38 state Senate seats. Whatever the total population of the state is, it will be divided by 38, and that will give you the target range plus or minus 5% for the Senate seats. And then they'll have to start reapportioning those. So if the population has shifted to Central Kentucky, or our growth is in the negative, and Central Kentucky, Northern Kentucky is in the positive, then that means that they could pick up a House or Senate seat, or at least maybe even two House seats. And um, that's one reason that if you go back to when I was elected in 2000, I only represented two counties. Well, by the time I left the General Assembly in 2000, at the end of 2018, I represented seven counties. 
And uh, that is concerning because, as Tim can tell you, for our health care providers, for our schools, for our government agencies, uh, a lot of the decisions that are made in Frankfurt and in Washington, D.C., because the United States House of Representatives will be reapportioned also based on the census data, uh, also likely in 2022, um, the United States Senate, of course, is not reapportioned because there's two U.S. senators elected statewide, but they're going to be reapportioned too. And the decisions that our legislators in Frankfurt make and our uh, congressional representatives in Washington make will be, uh, in large part, influenced by what the population of the various uh, areas of the state are. Those are some pretty big consequences. So again, if we can just remind everybody how this works, that um, when you are approached or when you're given the opportunity to participate in the census, it is of the utmost importance that everybody do it. I mean, it's your patriotic duty, honestly, without, I mean, to hate to go down the cliche road, but it's true. It is your patriotic duty. And especially if you feel that same passion that you guys do and that I do for our region, this is awfully important. Well, it reminds you of voting. You know, everybody has a right to vote. Some folks don't take advantage of it. And this is sort of along the same lines. It's mm -hmm. an opportunity for you to be counted, stand up, represent the county in a very positive way, and make a big difference. And just like Ray said, you know, you go from two counties to seven counties, uh, and you've done a great job, but at the end of the day, how can you, if it, that gets to 10 to 12 counties, your voice gets diminished, and you can only go in so many different directions yeah. as you're leading people. So the smaller county size and representation we have, the bigger voice we have in Frankfurt. And let's just be honest, we can't give up a lot of voices from Eastern Kentucky and Frankfurt because we need change. Uh, we need positive change, and the more people we have up there supporting Pike County, Floyd County, and our surrounding Eastern Kentucky counties, that's the only way we're going to ever get there. That's a so, great point. Uh, let's do this. Let me just give a few examples of why, you know, what census data is used for, and let Tim walk us through the timeline, how the process works. Uh, one of the things is local schools. Uh, your population uh, determines average daily attendance, determines the seat funding allocation. Uh, but the state needs to know, you know, where do we need to build new schools? Uh, what are the changing demographics? Do you know, our schools need, you know, need to be consolidated? Uh, we saw in 1990 with the uh, lawsuit that brought CARA into being that, uh, you know, the, the tax consequences for rural Kentucky uh, were inequitable and certain areas of the state were paying a lot more and certain areas were paying a lot less. And our region of the state, uh, the schools were underfunded and population plays a role in that. Emergency medical services health care, our senior citizens programs, we receive federal funding, public housing dollars, uh, transportation infrastructure for state roads and county roads, uh, infrastructure like water and wastewater systems, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're going to spend the money where it's going to do the most good. The largest population centers are going to get their, their share before the rural areas do. And then, um, again, when we talk about health care dollars, uh, we have a lot of our facilities with a high percentage of Medicaid uh, recipients, and it's vital to our, our medical facilities that they have uh, adequate reimbursement rates, that, that the folks in Washington and Frankfurt, I think Tim could address this probably better than anybody, you know, we can't afford a cut to the Medicaid program because it would be catastrophic to some of the largest employers in, in eastern Kentucky. But, uh, Tim, why don't you talk about that? Well, well, from Medicare and Medicaid, and when you think about health care in eastern Kentucky or some of the rural regions where we operate our services, typically that's about 65 to 70 percent of your business. So as we go through our strategic, strategic planning process at ARH, we're working on our next three and five year strategic plan now. So we pull a lot of demographics from the census 10 years ago to see what our data looks like. And then we do a little bit of a scrub to see how's it changed or how do we think it's changed based on our patient mix. Great example is um, 
OBGYN services in eastern Kentucky. You got an out migration of a younger generation leaving to find jobs that aren't available to a certain extent here. And at the end of the day, if you look at the statistics, you're looking at a 5 to 10 percent reduction in OB services that are needed in eastern Kentucky. So strategically, as a community CEO of a hospital, I need to take a look at that data and say, okay, how best can I serve the community? If I've got that reduction in OB services, maybe I've got a different angle I can go to help out people that truly have a different type of need. So that data is very important. Uh, the neat thing about it is April 1st is Census Day. will be recognized here and be recognized across the nation, too. And we're going to have a uh, booth at the upcoming Hillbilly Days. Uh, hopefully uh, we may have some giveaways there to encourage people to come out sign up, go ahead and participate in the census. But we got some key dates coming up here and, and today's sort of the kickoff publicly of doing this this announcement or doing this show. We've had a couple of PSAs, but there's been a lot of work done behind the scenes going back to August last year. Had about 35 different groups come together to work with us uh, on ways that they can help promote Census 2020. So uh, the next couple weeks and the next couple months will be very important that we get the message out. We encourage people from businesses to churches to schools. I mean, those are the key stakeholders in our community. I mean, you think about the grade schools, the high school, UPOC, the hospitals, and the churches. That's a large population right there. And if we could get the message out to those folks, they can help us tremendously, hopefully to get the right numbers into the system, which will shape our future for the next generation. Well, as far as the timeline goes, I know we're just in the in the introductory phase. Right. But once you have that opportunity, let's let's talk about the real nuts and bolts. How long will it take somebody to fill out the census? Well, you know, it depends on the internet. If they use the internet, it's going to be a little bit quicker. But mm -hmm. I would really find it hard to believe it'd take greater than fifteen to twenty minutes max. I okay. mean, if it's on the internet, you're checking your boxes and moving on. If you'd like to do a paper survey, and like I said, I think that may be generational, generational as to which approach you take. It doesn't really matter if you do it on the phone, you do it by internet, or you do a paper survey. All that's going to be counted, and all all that we're going to be getting credit for in Pike County. Now, I, I hate to bring up a negative, but anything of this magnitude has the potential to attract um, the scammers. So we need to let people know the census will never ask you for your social security number, right? Well, you know, you've, you've got the hackers out there in today's world and you've got the uh, telemarketers calling. Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, they will not ask you anything related to your personal financial information or your social security number. It will be very general questions and it will be questions that can help them your age, your sex, uh, income, things like that, that will give them general ideals so they can track the true demographics of Pike County. And they also don't ask anything about party affiliation, so political parties. That has, has nothing to do with party affiliation. That's important so, to remind people about. Yeah. But we do want to make sure we include everybody, mothers, fathers, children, cousins, aunts, uncles, in-laws, and outlaws, right? <laughs> so we we'll make sure that we've counted all of them. And that's everybody that lives in your household or is even just staying with you. Um, one of the statistics that really got my attention that I, I learned fairly recently, and it's pursuant to the students, the high school students in Pike County, there is a large percentage of high school students who are staying in someone else's home. They don't have, they're not with their parents or with their, um, the people who have guardianship of them. They're staying at somebody else's house. We need those people to be counted there, right? And we need to help from the schools to get that message out, mm -hmm. too. And we talked earlier, there's a lot of grandparents in Pike County and surrounding counties that are raising their grandchildren, too. So we, we need to get all those numbers, and we just need to get the voice out and get the message out, again, of the importance. And I think sometimes we don't realize how important the census is. And it's been going on for a long time, and as we age... We know it's coming. We know it's a census year, but sometimes I don't think we've really taken the time to express the importance. This time, it's extremely important, not just to Pike County, but all the counties in eastern Kentucky. We have a great opportunity to get a, good, a great turnout and get our numbers where they need to be, and we continue to have a great voice in Frankfurt as well as in the United, United States government. And if we don't have that voice, like we said earlier, you know, 
lack of a voice, then who's going to pay attention to what our needs are? And I think we all know we have a lot of concerns, but we have a lot of opportunities in eastern Kentucky to prosper, too. And the census is an opportunity for sure us. It, is. it really is. Now, I can remember many years ago having a census taker come to my mm -hmm. parents' house and stand and fill out a questionnaire and ask all those questions. But I'm understanding that only a portion of the households will be visited now. A lot of people will get a census um, form in the mail and then you have the opportunity to go online. So I think that old fashioned idea of a census taker going door to door and knocking isn't so much the way it works. I think it's about 1% now. That's a and big that's, difference. That's mm -hmm. a remarkable change over the last two census. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember as a child that, uh, you know, that was a big deal. The census taker would go door to door to door. Yes. And you know, it put a lot of people to work, and it still puts a lot of people to work. But it's only 1%. And uh, it would, you know, it, it's really not an onerous burden to respond to the census. But if you do have questions about it and you have a concern, or if you think somebody's called you and they're, asking for information, saying they're from the Census Bureau, and they're asking for that, you know, financial information, bank accounts, Social Security cards, asking you questions about political uh, parties or political affiliation, mm -hmm. call the Census. Uh, you can get the number online, or you can call the Pike County Judge Executive's Office at 432-6247. We will put you in touch with the appropriate uh, officials at the Census Bureau to make sure that this is reported and that steps are taken to find out what's being uh, perpetrated, who's doing it, and, and what uh, law enforcement agencies might need to be advised about that. We do want people to be careful, and we've got a population out there, particularly some of our senior citizens, that um, are already I think somewhat vigilant about phone calls and unsolicited things that come to them. So it's a real easy way to know, it, and that is that the census will never ask you for a donation or for a payment of any kind. They won't ask you for your social security number or anything about your political party. So it's pretty easy to have those red flags in your mind and know to watch for those things. Um, I, I want to thank you all for taking the time today to make this um, a priority because again, let's bring it back to where we started. What is in it for us? What's in it for Pike County, for all Pike Countyans to be counted on the census? Well, I think at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's sort of where we started the program out. It is about the numbers. It is about making sure we get the appropriate count, not just for today, but for the next 10 years. Because like you mentioned earlier, every what that count is, it's not going to change. So as Ray and the county and the city, and they go out looking for potential suitors to move in, businesses mm -hmm. to move into eastern Kentucky, they're going to be dependent upon those numbers. When those businesses pull those numbers up and they're not as attractive as they want them to be, we may never get boots on the ground to get them in here to look at buildings and just see who we are because we got a great culture, we got a great diversity, and it gives us a great opportunity to tell our story online by demographics and then due to face-to-face -face meetings to really grow our economy. And it's all about the economy. It is, isn't it, ultimately? Well, as Judge Executive and on behalf of the Pike County Fiscal Court, I'd like to thank Tim for his work on this uh, committee. Uh, all the participating stakeholders, you uh, and the, the folks that have done the PSAs already, uh, it really is taking a lot of community involvement. And over the next several weeks, we're going to be continuing to talk about this at our fiscal court meetings on Facebook and so forth. But if you do have a question, you can go to the website 2020census.gov, 2020-2020census.gov. And that should be able to give you all the information that, uh, that you would need. But again, if you have questions, call the judge's office, 606-432-6247. We'll be happy to address any questions that we can answer, and if not, put you in touch with the appropriate Census Bureau officials. I love this way to kind of end um, our messaging today. You don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer. You don't have to be a member of Congress to help shape the future of our region. Every single individual here can help shape our future simply by responding to the census. That gives, that kind of puts the power in everybody's hands. And I think it's important that everyone understand and hear that message and then respond to it. It's just like Tim said, voting. It's, yeah. it's the same. It's your duty as a citizen to make sure you respond to the census. 
and uh, because the consequences of not responding uh, could affect each one of us and our families for, for many years to come. And it is about those multiple generations coming along behind us, isn't mm -hmm. it? That's correct. All right. Thank you all so Thank much. Thank you for having us. Anything else that we did not get to that's important? We may have Tim back on to talk about some other issues Good, uh, I hope here so. at, on one of the Pike County reports. Uh, we do have a fiscal court meeting um, that will air. I'm sure this program will be on the air probably on Thursday the 27th or maybe Friday the 28th. We have a court meeting next week, and we have a lot of work to do. We're starting work on the county's budget, and uh, we're going to continue to work on the, the census, uh, making sure everybody understands that, and we appreciate everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much. Tim, thank you. It's always you. good to be with you all, always good to do this show, and I want to thank everyone for watching and being with us. I'm Cindy Mae Johnson. Thanks.